back, everybody. The Obsession Podcast here on Mike Stadler. I'm Carl Bethke. Got another question that came in to us, Carl. What do we got? We had a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing, <laughs> ask us about uh, long distance shooting. We're talking archery, obviously, um, ethical or not. And had another uh, subscriber ask Carl about uh, shot placements on Whitetail and other games. So we're going to combine that together. Alrighty. And uh, go from there. Go from there. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's address the long distances first. Number one. <clears throat> I think if your equipment is right and you've tested, and what I mean by testing is I mean thoroughly tested. So arrows, bows, everything. I guess what the people talk about is effective range, Mike. To me, an arrow flying through the air at 200 yards, if it's on target, is still effective with a sharp broadhead. I would recommend shooting like that. Yeah. But is it effective? Yeah. Okay, so what's your effective range? I hear a lot people talk about, uh, you know, if you're going to be effective at 50, you need to shoot 100. So double the distance that you're furthest shooting with a good group. Half of that distance is your effective range. I don't think that that's a, a bad statement. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I hold a 3-4 inch group at 100 <laughs> just like you. So, is my effective range only 50 yards? No. Correct. Because I have shot deer and you have shot animals also. We've shot animals at 100 and past 100 with a bow and arrow. We'll tell you that right now. Um, matter of fact, you can, might not even be able to see the camera, but there's an antelope over here that was shot at 118 yards with a bow. Yes, sir. And that was a great shot because it was one arrow, nice. dead animal. Correct. Um, you know, if you're capable of holding a three or four inch group at that distance, I think <clears throat> you're more than able to shoot that distance. And people are going to vary, talk variables. You know, there's a lot of time between the bow, when the bow goes off and the arrow hitting the animal at 100 yards. I don't disagree with that. Correct. But a comfortable animal at 100 yards isn't going to run. Nine times out of ten, I'm pretty sure it's not going to duck. Although people be like, well, there's that one time. Well, we can talk about that one time when you're doing the same thing at 20. Because they're that fast. No, we can say, we're not going to shoot a white tail. No. No. This is... That's, that's an out west. Yeah, in that's our case, case, the long distance shooting for us is out west. I don't... Shot really too, know, like, yeah. Uh, elk. Correct. Awesome. I don't... <clears throat> Honestly, 40-yard whitetail shot's a pretty long shot to me. Mm -hmm. I have shot them that far, but, you know, ethics are in your own mind, realistically, to me. Everybody has their own view of what they think ethics are. Long-distance shooting does nothing but make you a better shot. That is a fact. We had a discussion with an individual at our bull club the other day. We were walking out, and we were shooting at... What was that, 90, 100 yard shot? Yeah, basically. I was going to say 95 to 100 yards. And whenever we walk off the course, the last thing we do, we take one shot. And this is guessing yardage, guys. Yeah. We're not using range finders, nothing. We are looking at the shot and taking the shot. Um, last week's was 65. The week before that was 95, 100 yards. And he's telling us how we don't need to shoot that far. Mike's statement was, if you want to get better, you need to challenge yourself, shoot further distances. Mm -hmm. So, it, that comes up to, I guess that's your choice. You know, I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. Is it ethical to me? I think it's ethical to me. If I can hold a three or four inch group at 100, 110 yards, I'm going to take that shot at, out west, and I will. I mean, and, let's, and we can say this too. I mean, do, do Carl and I want a 100 yard shot? No. no. I'll take I a mean, twenty yard yeah, shot every day. I'd love to have a twenty yard shot on these mule deer that we've out west for. I've never had a twenty yard shot. Never. I never have either. 
Um, but I, I love it, or an elk, or an animal, but you don't get it. It's not real world. No. Um, and of course, don't forget, we're hunting on our own. Right. Spotting and stalking. We're not with a guide, so I'm not saying you can't. Maybe they have stuff set up you can get those shots. Maybe. Maybe. But I'll tell you what, we're pretty good spot stalk hunters. Pretty damn good. I will say that. Oh, yeah. I would challenge, I'd put us up against anybody that wants to go out west. Because we've done it a long time. We have failed a million times. Oh, yeah. And learned something from everyone. So, um, I was never a long distance shooter when I met Carl. I shot that 30 yards and in. I was a whitetail hunter. Mm -hmm. um, but I have become a very good shooter out far because I shoot out far. And I do agree with, I've seen some people I saw on a show the other day, I don't remember what it was. Um, but they're saying how, you know, to be, to be a better whitetail shot, you know, if you're looking to shoot 30 yards, shoot 50. Yeah. Shoot 50, shoot 50. I agree 100%. Yeah. Because if you're shooting great at 50, 30 yard shot seems like a drop in the bucket. Whereas if you're just only shooting 30 and say you have a big buck coming, he's 35, which right at the end of my range. Right. But when you're shooting 50 all the time, like 35 yards, boom. Yeah, the last, deal. last thing I ever want to hear anybody say is, or even think about is, if, if you're efficient at 30 yards, all of a sudden there's a buck at 50, and you pull back, shoot, and injure that animal, yeah. and then you tell me, well, I never really shoot that far, but it was a big buck. Have a little respect for the game yeah. there, honey. Okay. Yeah. And then people are going to argue, you know, they'll say the same thing about us shooting out west. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? When I'm telling you I'm shooting a three-inch group at 100 yards, that's when I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. There's no reason I should miss a 100-yard shot. No. We do it all the time. And we do it in the wind. Oh, yeah. You know, and you know, Carl talks about testing. Um, we shoot our bows continuously. We shoot them all year. Um, we shoot a lot of weights off of our bows. People give us crap about that all the time. Our bows weigh 9 and 10 pounds at but least. We do that because they are solid. They are stable. Um, we get done shooting a course, like Carl says. So we're shooting 16 arrows on the course. We come out and throw that arrow, and that bow is rock dead solid. Mm -hmm. If it's windy, not windy. Last week was windy. Or no, two weeks ago, sorry, was windy. Yep. That 95 yard shot, windy, and both of us would have killed that deer. Mm -hmm. And both of us know how to canter our bow into the wind because we've done it enough. That's which a, is when we use our levels. Yeah, and that's a big one. I would tell people that too. You know, um, we can talk wind all the time. You know, if you practice and you know, pick up, you can physically within two or three miles an hour figure out the wind direction you can control your wind drift by cantering your bow with your bubble so that level isn't there just to prove your level all the time or bubble on the level into the wind and the arrow will hit the center based off of how much wind there is which i'm judging also so yes there is a guess yeah but there's a guess at 20 yards too oh yeah okay now the one thing that we do use all the time and especially when we're shooting or hunting is a range finder uh, I, <laughs> and I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I I missed probably one of the biggest bucks I probably would have ever taken because I looked. I'm like, deer's only 25 yards away, <laughs> and my range finder was literally hanging right on my chest, just by my heart, where it always hangs. Yep. But I guess I didn't need to pull that up. Anyway, long story short, I shot under that buck. Yeah. Never to see him again. Um, when I arranged it, he was not 25 yards. He was 29 yards. You know. So yeah. where'd that arrow go? Underneath him. Goodbye. See you later. If you don't have a range finder and you don't have binos in your pack, you're doing things wrong. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> you know, and, and, and the thing you say with range, too, I know people are like, well, I range that tree and I range that. Well, that's good. Agreed. I do it, too. Oh, yeah. But I'm not going to be like, oh, I think that was a tree I ranged, because at that point, it might not be the tree you ranged. Oh, 100%. You know, and if you can't, and I told, I told Phil this, we talked about it. I told Phil this one thing. I said, if you can't pull a range finder up and range that animal, you shouldn't be shooting him. Well. Because if you think you don't have time to do it, then you don't have time to make a good shot. No, that's true, too. So, get a range. Always get a range. That That's... That's more ethical to me than a long distance shot. 
So if you're guessing a range and just lobbing an arrow at something, it, that pisses me off more than anything. Oh yeah. And nobody likes to injure an animal. Everybody's going to injure an animal if you're a bull hunter. Sooner or later. People will tell you they don't, and they've never done it, or they're a liar. Yeah, well that's a fact. That or they're, yeah. I've never seen anybody that disciplined who hasn't done it. No. Even at 20 yards or less. Oh yeah. I've made, a, made some spotty shots at 20, 25 yards. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And it happens too. A lot of times, you know, it, it, it comes down to the individual too if you can't <clears throat> yourself in the, under pressure. But uh, as for, you know, aiming references and, and uh, you know, picking a spot on an animal. Uh, obviously you're always wanting that right behind the shoulder thing. Uh, like you're saying, I think what a lot of people need to learn, and I know we had to learn it too, is it's not so much where the arrow goes in, where is the arrow going to come out? That's a good one. That, to me, is always the biggest thing. We have had, both of us had multiple people tell us, you can't take that shot. Oh yeah. You can't oh. take that shot, Carl. You can't. Yeah, that's when I'm taking that shot. And I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I know for a fact he has deer on his wall, I'm not taking that shot, if you want to call it. <laughs> and it's I so you. You know, and people say you can't, don't take a shot with an animal quarter to you, don't take a shot with an animal facing you. Um, which I'm going to tell you, if, um, don't do it if you're not confident. Yeah, don't no, do it if you don't know your equipment. That's 100% a fact. I will say it <laughs> many times, you know, I'm taking it. I'm taking that shot. I'm not even thinking about it when I take it, and that's why I take Pretty it. Pretty solid deer. Yeah. You can see that my exit wound is back. I've done it. Um, the entrance wound. I, have, I know I have over uh, right behind the front shoulder. Three or four of them back here hard, so. that have been quartered to me. One facing me directly. Uh -huh. um, I've taken that shot. Um, I've taken a hard quarter away shot, um, but I know where to put that arrow. I'll be honest. I like that kind of quartering to you shot. I'm not gonna lie. It yeah. opens up a big target yeah. on the front. It does. You know, obviously, I I'm also not gonna lie. I'm gonna say a broadside shot's the best shot. Oh, quartering yeah. away is a really good shot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> both work, but you know, quartering away shot. We all talk about how great the quartering away shot is. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it makes sense, right? To the point to where if you're not shooting a strong bow or you're shooting a stupid expandable, yeah. and it sticks in the other offside shoulder. Now, yeah, you're gonna get both lungs, and it's gonna do its thing. And, it is what it is. Retrieval is hard. Retrieval can be hard when the arrow's in there. You got one hole. Or we've, you know, both of us have also seen the uh, the expandable quarter away shot hit the rib cage and go up along the outside the outside edge. edge of the rib cage yeah. and not do anything. Yep. You know, um, which uh, obviously that's a whole other story. Right. With the broadhead thing, but that's the equipment thing. You know, knowing our equipment, shooting our bow was like we have shot so much just this last year, now all winter, this whole summer. Like, and neither one of us have done a lot of long range shooting yet, mm -hmm. um, which we will. But I tell you what, like, I take my bow right now and walk outside and put an arrow, you know, inside of a glass at 100 yards. Yeah. Because I'm confident with my bow. My arm is stable. My release is true. Hey, so my mechanics are good. Yeah. So I know that my arrow is going to be good. <clears throat> and that's a big thing about it, too, <clears throat> you know. There, there's a lot to that aim small, miss small statement, you know, but I still think the most important aspect of taking an animal and talking about aiming, because this, this question comes from somebody who is a newer bow hunter, is the confidence in, that you have in your equipment and your ability to make that shot at the right time. Um, you know, bra a, a deer, and I'll show you guys on the video, I'll show you a shot of a deer basically quartering really hard at me almost straight on and I am that blood trail and I'll show you that too was it's, it's like somebody just pouring paint all the way across the cornfield till they got the crick get up in the crick and died that's that quartering two shot that you're not supposed to take mm -hmm. right in front of the shoulder right straight down through quartering through takes out the close near side lung the heart and the opposite yeah, side it's, lung. it's very quick and your arrow goes sticking into the ground six yep. inches yep. Um, I wouldn't take that shot at a longer distance. I will tell you that. Yeah, you got it. You, that's kind of close and personal shot there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and something comes down to knowing your equipment and stuff again. All this, all this will come in, just so that that listener knows. All this comes in as you progress through your hunting career, your ability to uh, hold yourself 
mentally in check when that time comes. Because there's a lot of people I know are great archers. Yes. And I mean, like, kick my butt on a 3D course, and I, I know I'm a fair shot. And you put a deer in front of them, they can't hit shit. Yeah. They just fall apart. They got, I don't know if you want to call it uh, buck fever or whatever, but as soon as there's an animal in front, just shake and can't hold it together and mentally make bad decisions. Uh, I think the mental game of it is probably more important than where you're actually aiming, to be honest. Your ability to aim is based off of your mental capability to do what you need to do under that time. So you know when you'll see people, um, I, I went through it, you know, several years back with the punching my release and yeah, you had target panic. horrible shots and target panic or whatever you want to call it. I had it, I did it for a year and it was terrible, you know. And it wasn't me freaking out about the deer. No. It was just doing things wrong. And, uh, you know, I had to get myself out of it. And it's, I did, obviously. And, um, but, yeah, making a shot at the time of, is, you know, make it, like, this is where I was going with this. Like, when Carl and I pick our bow up, and we pull that back, like, we don't think about pulling the trigger. We don't think about when the bow's going off. Um, this is something that, I've gotten a couple of my buddies into now using like one of the same releases we're using. They're worried about pulling that trigger. Um, like I don't even know when I'm pulling the trigger anymore. No, and that's the way it's supposed to I be. just know whenever I'm mentally at ready, the shot goes off. Yeah. And it's going to be right. I know it sounds weird. Yeah, well, your body but, mentally knows, yeah. you know, okay, I'm aiming, I'm aiming, I'm aiming, and then it, boom, the shot goes off. It's no different than you, uh, you see people shoot with a back tension. Yeah, you don't you you don't really know when that's going off. You, it goes off when you're making a nice steady pull through it. Hundred percent. Nice steady pull through it. If you're making a nice steady pull through it, same thing when we're doing our shot. You know, and yes, we have a we we like to call it a back tension with a trigger. Yeah. You know, it's a it, it's a thumb button. Is they're like, it? well, it's not a back tension. It kind of is and it isn't. I guess whatever. It has a trigger. Yeah, and you shoot it like a you can shoot it like a back tension. I'll tell you right now, when I'm hunting white tails and the shot's pretty close, I'm the trigger is it gets triggered. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll push and pull, push, pull, and shoot. But it's I can trigger it if I have to. Still make a good shot on white tail. But I also will tell you, when I'm in a mule deer at long yardage, it's aim, push, pull, push, pull, and it's just aim, 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 boom, and that shot breaks. And when it breaks, Michael He'll, he'll attest to about that. When I make a good shot, I know I make a good shot. Mm. I hate it. I mean, I like it when he makes a good shot and he does it on the course to me, too. Like, this is a little bow shake and looks at you. Yeah, I get it. It was a good one. Yeah. Good shot. That one's in there. That, that one's in there. But, you know. You get confident. Your confidence is, is as important, if not more important, than your ability to aim your ball. I think. Yeah. The more you shoot, the better you're going to get, the more confident you're going to get. Move your target out. Um, yeah, and the double statement is a good <laughs> statement. If you want to be, if you're white tail hunting, to this individual who they ask, because I'm pretty sure they're hunting just here in Wisconsin, they're younger. Um, yeah, double the yardage you want to be effective at. If you want to be effective at 30 yards, then you should be shooting 60 yards, be able to hold that, all your arrows into a, well, let's just say a four inch group at 60 yards. If you can't do that, then you need to bring back, you know, bring the target back till you can do that, and then cut that in half, and we'll call that your effective range. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I, I want to. I guess one thing I want to touch on. I've gotten away from shooting groups. Yeah. Um, and I've tried to get some people away from that. I know Carl has too. Like when he says shooting a group, we like to shoot. Wait a second. We mean you, Phil. <laughs> I said it. Yeah, that's right. We like to shoot, you know, we have several targets, uh, blocks, mostly we shoot, they have different spots on them, or turn, like, we we like to shoot a spot on a target, shoot an arrow at that. Yep. Spot on the other side of the target, shoot an arrow at that. I don't want to shoot my arrows into a group, and why I don't want to is because then I start to overthink things. I'm like, well, why is this arrow right in the dead center of the bullseye, and this arrow is two inches to the right? Yeah. Who cares? Right. Who cares? Shoot spots. Shoot yeah. one good arrow, shoot at a spot. Shoot yeah. another arrow, shoot at a spot. Which yeah. is why we mark our arrows. We only shoot broadheads, you yeah. know, and we, 
knock tune arrows, um, maybe change broadhead single. I, not that I want to get into that. Okay. Because <laughs> I was going to bring it up. Are labeled. You know, we know the ones that fly good. We only shoot the ones with broadheads. Yeah. Because that's what we're hunting with. You know, and we like to shoot spots. Like, I don't want to shoot a broadhead and another broadhead. Right. <laughs> and, and destroy an arrow or cut my fletchings off. You know, shoot a spot. Here's one other thing I'm going to throw out there for you guys. And when Mike says we shoot our broadheads, that's what we do. We do shoot our broadheads. Now I'm not going to tell you guys, don't be going and... Because I do this. I will destroy a 3D target every year with broadheads. Mm -hmm. And... The reason I do that is I want the three-dimensional target to aim at because we're shooting at 100 yards and, you know, the sizing and everything. Um, I'm not telling you to do that because it can be real expensive. Just... If you're going to be shooting um, 3D tournaments all summer or whatever, that's great. And shoot your field points and do your thing. And shoot the winter leaks and do all of that. Shoot spots if you want in winter leaks. That's going to do nothing but make you a better archer all the way around. But when it gets time for hunting season, and when I mean time for hunting season, I mean May at the latest. Start shooting your broadheads. Because not always will your bow, number one, stay in tune. Or if you get a new bow, you have to tune your broadheads for your bow. I mean, it's going to sound crazy, but we're going to talk about tuning your broadheads for your bow. And you guys can check out past podcasts. I'm not going to get big into it. Correct. But only in an archery shop. I don't want to hear, well, my broadhead should fly the same as my field points, but I haven't tuned my bow. So when I put a fixed blade broadhead or even an expandable on the front of it, it flies differently. Mm -hmm. it should, I bet it does. Sometimes. Like, majority of the time. <laughs> like, you tune your bow to your broadheads. That's the whole idea. Yes. So... Anyway, enough of that part of that because it's going to get into some other things. But yeah, you know, we I, I know the question too was about you know whitetails and other animals. Like I know a guy. Uh, I talk to him at the gym a lot. He's a bow hunter. He's finally going out west to elk hunt. Mm -hmm. um, he's starting to get proficient around sixty yards or so. Yep. Um, and I told him, I said, I said this is what I would do if I was you. I said I would get. A small white tail target, like a little one. Yeah. And I said, I practice shooting that. And he gives me a look like, what do you mean? I'm like, because if you're killing that, you're killing an elk. Oh, yeah. Easy. And I said, think of the vitals on an elk compared yeah. to some little tiny, because I got a little dinky 3D target that yeah, I yeah. shoot. Yeah. It's little. Oh, yeah. I mean, me too. That's what I shoot. It's, it's like a fawn. fawn. The small white tail. Yeah. yeah. It's a, like a fawn target. And I said, but well, you're maybe. proficient hitting that. And an elk is like shooting a wall. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, Long area on an elk is. Yeah. Okay. So, and I think it rubbed in. I don't know. Yeah. I hope he does it. I mean, I want to see him kill one. Yeah. Oh, God, I hope you so. You know, I think it'd be cool. Like, but. Here's the other thing, just so you guys know, I mean, it realistically, as a hunter, it's your, right, it's your job to find, basically, look up the anatomy of the animal you're going to hunt. If you're going to Africa, I'll tell you right now, you're going to yeah, Africa, for sure. the lung area and the heart area of the African game is different than it is. In, it's, in general, it's the same as whitetail. But when you start looking and physically looking at it, the hearts, it's really low in the chest cavity of a, an African game. Lower than it does North American game. So I mean like an elk or something like that. You know, whitetails, we all know the heart sits down towards the bottom of the chest cavity. But uh, over, over there... The lung area and capacity is physically bigger up towards the top edge of the spine and down uh, down lower on the heart position. So that's important. Say you're going to hunt musk oxen, stuff like that, same deal. Look up the anatomy of the animal and it'll give you an aiming reference so you guys know what, what to do. Very important. But probably about the end of the podcast for that. I want that we appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate you guys watching. You guys any. Any other questions you want us to answer, please send them here to Rough Outdoors. Uh, here on YouTube, you can put them down in the comments, so you can send it to me at rushoutdoors.wi.com. Uh, we'll answer them as best we can. We appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. You can listen to it at rss.com, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. <laughs> well, uh, we'll be alright. Yeah, we don't know where we are. Yeah, yeah, we're everywhere. But, uh, if you guys get a chance, subscribe, like the channel, we appreciate it. Keep sending those questions and comments, we appreciate it. Good or bad. <laughs>